here we're going to find the comma mode gain, or ACM, for a source coupled pair with a current mirror load. Remember in the last set of slides we found that the differential mode gain was simply GM12 times RO2 in parallel to RO4. And we're noting GM12 uh, simply because GM, little gm1 uh, or little gm2, uh, since those two transistors are equal. Okay, so what we first need to know is that in feedback, VO, the output voltage, is going to track the node that I've labeled VA. Uh, and this is uh, because uh, feedback is going to try and equalize the uh, voltages on all of the transistors. So if we note this, then we could draw a virtual connection between node VA and the output node, since no current would flow through there because there's no voltage across it. Okay, if we do this, we have a common, uh, we're going to do a common connection between V1 and VI1 and VI2 because we're finding the common mode gain. So if we make all these connections, we find that the transistors are now connected uh, in parallel. So we can make an equivalent circuit that looks as follows. M3 and M4 are diode connected transistors and they're in parallel. So we have 1 over 2 GM3 4 technically in parallel with RO3 4 over 2. But we're going to say that this term is negligible in the parallel calculation because it's much larger than 1 over GM. We have our transistors M1 and M2 that have an output resistance associated with them. So this is RO12 over 2. We're taking our output off of the drain node. Now this transistor is has effectively twice the GM because it's two transistors in parallel. And finally, we have our resistance from the current source, which is R S. Okay, we can now do analysis to find VO over VCM. So first we need to find big GM. Big GM in this case is simply equal to 2 GM12 over 1 plus 2 GM12 times RS, which is coming from the current source. Our R total is equal to RO12 over 2 times 1 plus 2 GM12 times RS. in parallel with 1 over 2 GM3, 4. Now, this term should dominate, so we can say that our total resistance is approximately 1 over 2 GM3, 4. If we write this together, we find that our, our common mode voltage gain is GM1, 2 over GM3, 4 all over 1 plus 2 GM12 times RS. We can now find the common mode rejection ratio by taking the ratio of the common mode gain and the differential mode gain. And if we do this, we find that the common mode rejection ratio is RO2 in parallel with RO4 times 1 plus 2 GM12 times RS times GM34. And so we can easily see what we need to do to increase CMRR. So firstly, we could increase RO2 or RO4. And we would do this by changing the sizing of the transistors or the, tr or, or the current in the transistors. Uh, of course, we want to have RS as large, 
This means we want it closer to ideal current source. And further, we also want to have GM3 4 large. Now one last thing we need to start thinking about is which terminal is inverting and non-inverting. We basically have an op amp here. We have a differential input and a single-ended output, which is very much like what an op amp looks like. So to do this, we're going to do a stimulus analysis. So I'm going to go to terminal VI. I'm going to short VI2, and I'm going to go to terminal VI1 and place a plus delta V on this transistor. If I do this, This is going to cause more current to flow through M1. So I'm going to get a plus delta I in the direction of the arrow. This current gets mirrored between M3 and M4 and shows up at the output. So I get a plus delta I in that direction from the supply towards the output. Now this is going to serve to raise the voltage at the output. So I'm going to get a plus delta V at the output. So I put a plus input on M1 and I get a plus at the output. That means that M1 is the non-inverting terminal and it must mean that M2 is the inverting terminal. And of course this corresponds to the following figure of our generalized op amp where we have an inverting and a non-inverting terminal. All right, we'll stop there and we will continue looking at frequency response in the next uh, set of slides.